How did the 1918 virus come to be? Where did it originate and how? Did it come, did it, did it come into being by a, a random act of nature? Or were there other human hands involved in creating this, this dangerous pathogen? Folks, nature does not create killer viruses like this on its own. It has to have help. You look back at the, some of the killer diseases and epidemics that, that killed many humans, uh, notably the Black Death Plague of the Middle Ages, and you find that it's tied to poor sanitation, people uh, not uh, preparing their food correctly, tainted food stores, water being uh, contaminated from human fecal matter, uh, poor sewage, and those type of things. It was rampant in Europe. And that's really what caused that, that, that epidemic and, and death from the plague. In modern times, though, with our, our, our sanitation techniques, our food preparation and other uh, safety factors, refrigeration, uh, abilities to cook our food completely, the, the, the odds of having a, a pandemic are virtually reduced to, to, to zero. Uh, you'll see that every hotbed of viral uh, outbreak occurs in areas of the world that's known as the third world countries that have these problems with sanitation and food preparation, unsafe food and that type of thing. But going back to 1918, we have a really uh, important uh, expose written by a man named Charles Higgins back in the year 1920 where he explains completely how the 1918 virus came to be and the, the etymology, the beginning study of, of where it came from. Let me just share with, with you page 26 on this book called The Horrors of Vaccination. Now this book, I've, I've republished it and reprinted it uh, under my company, Mother Earth Minerals. You can purchase a copy, your own copy of this by going onto my website, uh, meminerals.com, or by calling our number. And, and, and please, you need to get a copy of this to understand how dangerous vaccination really is and, and the reasons why, I think, that so many Americans, uh, so many leaders of the free world, want to see people vaccinated with, with this uh, influenza shot. But anyway, page uh, 26. The grave nature of recent pandemic, epidemic, it wasn't called a pandemic until much later, uh, grave nature of recent epidemic of influenza and pneumonia, the relation of vaccination thereto. And he goes on and explains the origins of this 1918 virus that came from, from uh, military bases, both German bases in, in Europe as well as American and Allied bases in, in Spain, in England, and in, in America and Kansas. He goes on to show and, and, and documents, folks, that this is by the, the U.S. Uh, Army's own paperwork that shortly after being given a, a typhus fever vaccine that certain, a certain segment of the expeditionary force became ill with what was termed in, in the medical dogma at the time paratyphus. It wasn't full-blown typh typhus fever, but it was a, a similar in some ways to typhus fever, carrying a vaccine or carrying a, a high uh, um, fever, uh, chills, aches and pains, basically. It was, it was like an influenza, a paratyphus. And then after this uh, initial sickness hit these troops, they were released back uh, after the war into the population of America and throughout Europe, actually. And then they came in contact, uh, they were carrying this, this viral load and then basically gave it to other people. Uh, it, uh, it eventually developed into this, this so-called killer virus. Folks, the truth is the virus that killed millions of people was a direct result of contaminated, improperly prepared typhus fever vaccinations. 
prepared and distributed by the, the Rockefeller cartel. Now that's the, that's the hard, cold truth, and uh, for various ob reasons it should be, should be obvious, that truth will not be disclosed to the American people on mainstream TV, but it's absolutely the truth, as uh, Charles Higgins in his book documents, as well as the Secrets of the Dead PBS Home Video Killer Flu. It links the origins of the 1918 virus through the research documentation to the military bases uh, in America and England. How was typhus fever vaccines, how were they produced back then? Well, much the same way that vaccines are produced today. You take a, a, um, a, an affected individual, a human, with, and, and that, in this case, uh, typhoid fever, blisters, and postules and sores. They harvested that, the pus and liquid from, from those sores and then expanded them by applying them into an animal host, in this case, into uh, immature pigs, piglets. They took uh, uh, pigs, basically uh, sliced them in the, in the abdomen, uh, created open wounds, and then infected them with these typhus fever sores. And then they took, once this t uh, began to be in, uh, infections in the pigs, they harvested this medium and then put it into chicken eggs, uh, the albumin and, and proteins of the chicken eggs, to incubate and to grow and to make the vaccine. So you see, here's exactly how it happened. Human DNA and viral structures in typhus fever sores, taken and harvested and applied and injected into swine, into pig base, and then taken and harvested from the pigs into the birds, the bird eggs, the chickens, which got the DNA structure and the H5N1 structure on the chickens combining with the pigs, H1N1 virus load, combining with a multitude of human-based viruses. That's how the 1918 virus began, and that's what led to the 1918 pandemic. Can you see how that changes everything, folks? Because you, you have to understand the origins, the etymology of that 1918 catastrophe to understand what's being planned now for us. Isn't it interesting? Again, you've got to, to understand the so-called swine flu, which I call the Breivig flu, that is now being touted as the next pandemic, has the exact same structure and markers as the 1918 virus that was studied, locked down in plasma rings, and, and uh, basically weaponized for use by the U.S. Inst Institute of Pathology at Fort Detrick, Maryland, by Jeffrey Taubenberger and others. Now, Associated Press, Sunday, May 10th, the article which appeared in my local newspaper, the Ogden Standard Examiner, the headline reads, Swine Flu Saga has just started, and that is absolutely a true headline. Let me just share with you a few of the, the paragraphs. The most pivotal moments in the swine flu saga, I call it the Brevig flu saga, are yet to come, absolutely. Will it sweep through impoverished southern hemisphere countries in the next few months? Yes, it will. Will it roar back in the rest of the world in the, in the fall? Absolutely, yes, it will. And who will be vaccinated if it does? These are the questions that this article on the, on the author, a, a person named Lauren Niergaard in the Associated Press, poses. Very, very important questions to answer. In the weeks since swine flu grabbed the international attention, even years before that, some important actions have helped shape the course of this outbreak and the ways the world will handle future epidemics. 